back, everybody, to Tubby Talk, featuring myself, Terry, Terry Leahy from Terry Leahy Films, and my two good friends, Chris, Steve, and they are from Tubby Robot. That's right, where we do the show, we talk about video games on this show, all sorts of stuff. We want you to be part of the conversation, so please comment. And when you're done commenting, come here into the Tubby Robot Ice Cream Factory and talk to these guys in person about video games. That is what this is about. We are in Philadelphia, Maniac to be specific. Uh, what is the address, boys? It's 4369 Main Street. That's right. So come on in anytime and talk to these guys about video games. That's what this is about, building a community of nerds here in Maniunk where we make some young junk. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about, well, something that's near and dear to my heart. The original Game Boy. That classic Nintendo falling from the green screen and hitting that <laughs> right in the middle. But every time I see that, you know, a part of me uh, turns alive, a part of me remembers what it was like to be five years old again, six years old, and got 13 years old because the life cycle of that thing was amazing. It just would not die. But we're going to talk about uh, the Game Boy. And we want you to be a part of the conversation, so talk to us. Let us know what you like, let us know what you don't like about the show. But on to the show, because my intros are way too long. <laughs> Fellas, first Game Boy memory. Well, my first Game Boy memory is borrowing a friend's Game Boy and playing Tetris. The original Tetris with the blurry blocks dropping down because the screen refresh rate was garbage. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. But, and just playing it. Like with the full lights on in my room because the screen started to fade because the battery was fading. And I'm trying to eke out every last Tetris in line before it goes kaput. Why didn't you call the phone number on the inside of the battery pack? <laughs> had a little Mario with like a tech kit. Remember him? I always looked at that number and I wondered who would call that number. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever did, but I, I wanted to. I called it once. What happened? Um, they fixed my NES. What? Yeah, uh, my NES was not working. Oh, nice. uh, the contacts were all rusted because of blowing. They were like, don't do that. It rusts them. Um, <laughs> Rub alcohol on it and it was fixed. It or well, something. no, they, they, I sent it to them oh, and wow. they put a new, um, basically a new uh, pin reader in it and sent it back and it, it worked. Wow. It pretty amazing. So Steve's first memory is about working, using a Game Boy that didn't really Well, work. using a Game Boy until the batteries started to die. Until it started so to die. So the game was fading because the batteries were dying, the four triple A's you put in there. The little red flicker, right? Double A's, but yeah. I mean double A's. I said triple. I <laughs> because of the four double A batteries you put in there. That's yeah. right. With the Man. little red flicker, yeah. You know, that, that brings up a good point before we move on. That thing was a brick. Oh, yeah. I think the sheer size of it was a big memory for me because, you know, you take it to school... It's not fitting in your pocket. <laughs> you out of your mind. <laughs> I mean, it fit in my pocket, but I wore Jinkos to school by that time. So, <laughs> I just remember uh, you couldn't have that big Game Boy unless you had a big old Game Boy case to go with it that had all your cartridges and whatnot in it. And it was, it was kids, it was this big, like the carrying case, to hold something that was like this thick. Yeah. Uh, so did you have the one that was shaped like an actual Game Boy? No. Because my cousin had a Game Boy case. Game Boy, it was shaped like a larger Game, Game Boy. Oh my god. And you just filled it up and it was just made an absurd thing more absurd. It that was pretty cool. Is my favorite thing ever. But yeah, my, my first memory of a Game Boy actually, uh, my uncle was the first one in the family to get one, and he at the time lived with my grandmother. So whenever we go over to my grandmother's house, we'd pile up and be like, let's all play the Game Boy, and we'd all be huddled around. <laughs> and I remember playing the first Spider-Man game on the Game Boy, which I believe oh, was I just love called that one. Spider Man. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, Spider Man's talking on the walkie talkie to like all the enemies in the beginning, and it was kind of, kind of clever writing for a Game Boy game yeah. at the time. Um, but it'd be like, oh, Mysterio's on the line. What's up, Bullhead? <laughs> um, and then Spider Man would walk around, and you could shoot a web forward, you could swing, and you could punch. Um, it was fun. Very cool. I think I remember uh, booting it up and throwing Mario Land on for the first time, and I remember how much I loved that music. <laughs> And how much I noticed it wasn't quite as crisp and nice as my Nintendo or my Super Nintendo. It was just a little off. But mm. it made it fast. I remember that game being pretty fast and really difficult. I don't think I ever went through and actually beat the man in the cloud at the end or the little alien dude or whatever he was. It's a tanga. Tanga. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember beating him until I was probably a teenager going back into that game. Wow. Yeah, th that game I didn't play much of. I remember when it came out, though, and it wasn't on the NES. And I had the NES at home, mm -hmm. and it was like, oh, it's a game I can't play. I need to buy another system to play this <laughs> game. And I felt it was very unfair at the time. I was like, why doesn't it just get the same games 
oh my god, and of course I didn't know anything about like porting a game to the technology, to the form factor, but mm -hmm. at the time it was just, I knew there was a Mario game and then I could and, not play it. And yeah, and it was very disappointing, you could not play it. Yes, yes. Yeah, kids, I mean, back then it wasn't, it was not like it was today, I mean, that's also, Nintendo was always fighting a war on two fronts, you know, they had the consoles, but the Game Boy was not out that far after the Nintendo, right? When did it cut first launch? Well, the, the um, Game Boy, I believe, was launched in 1988 or 89. Wow. I believe so. It was a couple years. It was like, American launch was 85, was it, for the NES? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it was about four, um, three to four years afterwards. So very close. Yeah, so all the way since the beginning, they had two. Finally, now they've moved to, I guess, one. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, there was a time where you had to own two Nintendo systems if you wanted to play all the Marios, which is what I did and absolutely wanted to play. The game that totally blew my head off was Mario 2. Oh, yeah. As soon as those bunny ears Six showed Six golden up. coins? Yes. Mario, Six golden coins. Mario 2. Uh, Mario Land 2, Two. was yes. incredible. Um, I remember that was one of the first games I actually got for it. So I didn't get it until three or four years after it was mm -hmm. out, um, mm -hmm. and the, the price dropped a whole bunch. And I remember very specifically, my parents surprised us. We drove to Carrefour. <laughs> remember the uh, you story, remember this? Yeah. yeah, and Carrefour was this giant superstore, even bigger than like your your WalMarts and Whoa. bigger than your. Um, it was like Costco. Style. It was bigger than Costco because it was just this massive place that all the people who worked in it actually wore roller skates to get around it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I remember we went there and they were like, "Oh, we're picking up a Game Boy." I was like, "What?" Oh my god! I'm so excited. <laughs> so we got the Game Boy that came with Tetris, and we got. Mario Land 2. Mm -hmm. And I was so excited about Mario Land 2. It looked incredible. I mean, it looked a lot like Mario World. Yeah. yeah. Um, Just and, shrunken down and then uh, P, C, um, like P green. Yeah. And, and yeah, monochrome. And, uh, and it was the first appearance of Wario as a character, which was pretty cool. Really? That was before just yeah. Wario came out? Yep. Yeah, that was Wario's Wario initial. Woods or whatever? Yeah, he was that. That's his first. Yeah, he appearance. was a villain of and six golden coins. Wow! So. I will. I'll tell you something funny. I was reading Nintendo Power at the time. Does anyone remember the comic that was in the Nintendo Powers? Oh yeah, I that love introduced them. Mario. Oh, yeah. That is a heartbreaking comic <laughs> because in it, Mario's a dick. <laughs> yeah, like, he kind of, he's mean. He's kind to of Wario, like, and that's why Wario became bad. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah that's right. He um, was picking on him because he didn't look as cool as a cowboy, right? Weren't they playing cowboys? Yeah, they were playing had, like, cowboys turnips? Indians, and he was like, "You got to be the bad guy." He's like, "I don't want to be the bad guy." He's and like, they had "I'll get him back." For guns. Yeah, that. Uh, but the, I love the drawings. Check oh, this out. That sounds awesome. Yeah, really there's cool. a collected edition. It came in a big yellow book, and it also has the entire like. Mario World comic that came out right after that. It's a good comic! Yeah, it's, it's, it's drawn amazing. Like, the illustration's great. You can find a PDF of it online, like, no problem. Yeah, Shh. absolutely. <laughs> Always buy from your local comic book retailer. There you go. Hi, JD. So, um, one of the cool things about the Game Boy, though, was this little black cord that could oh. connect one to the other. And I remember that suddenly brought Tetris back alive into my world that I could play a friend in school or on a bus. I mean, the big thing this opened up was I don't remember taking a car ride for 10 years without playing something. <laughs> like finally there was something to do in the car, but I remember that competition specifically was so cool. <laughs> yeah. But for a reason that I didn't realize until much later when Xbox came out, it was because you're on your own system. Yeah. You weren't sharing a screen. And that was amazing to me. It was so cool. And uh, that was a lot of fun. I remember, like, Dr. Mario was a big hit in that way, too. But it would be a while. I don't think there was ever a game out where you could play simultaneous action, was, was there? There there were. Uh, there was, like, F1 Race was the, it came out with the yeah, four-player yeah, 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 adapter. Yeah, 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 remember the so F1 Race. Four Game Boys race at the same time. Whoa. I remember playing um, that because I played a lot of F1 race with my friends. And the big one that really made the link cable become essential was Pokemon. Yep. Uh, you can't talk about the Game Boy without talking about Pokemon. Absolutely. And, and I mean, that came out later in its life cycle, but that was trading was everything. Yeah. And who did, did it piss you guys off? It pissed me off. I want to play with friends. This is an RPG. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I didn't need to catch them all. <laughs> oh, I did. I had to. Mm. And I, I did. There is still a cartridge somewhere. A blue cartridge that is completely done. Oh, you went blue. I went red. I did go blue. I think I went blue. I have a tragic story behind it, so I'll get into it later, but I think I went blue. We can hear it now. 
it's, it's, it's better <laughs> later. It's better saved. Okay. But yeah, that was the big one that hit, and then I remember everybody walking around with a Game Boy. Suddenly, the Game Boy was the biggest yeah. system that there was during that time, and and N sixty four was out, right? Uh, it 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 was eventually, yeah. Yeah, which is crazy. Like I remember more people playing that game than any other game. That I can recall, that yeah, they were like over the world. They were contemporaries for like a, a brief period yeah. of time before like the color came out. Yeah, you're right. Like a stadium. Is, yeah, that's right. Because Pokemon Stadium on the N64 was using those original cartridges. And I remember the Advance came out, and that was like GameCube era. Like it wasn't until much oh, later. Oh yeah. Uh, it was. Sorry. Think man. about that. That's over ten years. That's that that crazy. Thing was out. And the, the way it looked, like you go back. Have you played? When's the last time you played an original Game Boy? Long time. Long time. Long time. Long time. Too long. He has one at his house. For me, it's been like two weeks. Oh, good. <laughs> it's real hard to go back to. The way that <laughs> display technology has come like over the years, it is really hard. I couldn't believe it. Like, I squinted at this for hours as a kid. Like, and you can how, still read today. How am I not blind? Yeah. How so, do any of us still have eyes Like based on the amount? <laughs> they, they were strengthened by playing these games. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was, everything was a shade of green. It was either dark green or light dark green. <laughs> yeah, with lines. With lines. And like Steve was saying before, the refresh rate was really bad. So anything that moved had a trail. And so if the whole Ghosting screen was scrolling, wazoo, yeah. everything trailed. I do remember that specifically in Link's Awakening. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, every time a dungeon shifted to another screen. That's right. Everything was just a blurry mess until it resolved. But That was, that was kind of cool, though. What I, I loved about that game was that it was perfect for the form factor because... You fought on a the screen, didn't move while you were fighting. Mm -hmm. Like, you had to go from screen to screen. That's right. I mean, I think Link's Awakening might be my favorite Game Boy game of all time. Wow. I think it might be my favorite Zelda game of all time. That's a huge statement. I love that game. It's <laughs> definitely in my top five games of all time. Yeah. Really? If I'm thinking about Game Boy. I gotta replay. Game Boy era, it would. Yeah, I have to edge out Link's Awakening because Pokemon I loved and I played it until my Game Boy was stolen. Nobody ever stole Nintendo's. But they stole Game Boys. <laughs> All the time, especially at arcades. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the, um, yeah, Link's Awakening, I beat multiple times. Me too. In a row. <laughs> I haven't done that. All right, uh, name three bosses from Link's Awakening. Aghanim is the last boss. Um, then you have, I don't remember the well, names. Well, it's kind of like the wind uh, face. You can name the object. Yeah, well, there was the... You already put me on the spot. I had to. I haven't, I haven't played I remember it in 20 years. I remember a giant bird. It was a giant bird. That was when you fought like on top of... Yeah. That was like the one like different boss battle where you're like on top of a tower as opposed to inside of a dungeon. And there was the, the um, Lemola thing that is just the giant worm with the googly eyes. Oh, that's, like, that's, that's, that's what I was thinking that's 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 that of, the giant worm. Yeah. That thing on the Super Nintendo, Link to the Past, I just played Link to the Past recently, that thing kicked my ass. <laughs> like, I was not ready. I needed more training. For sure, before I took that beast on again. Yeah, Link to the Past was great. I mean, that was like, the Super Nintendo was out. It was like one of the first big games in the Super Nintendo. But I feel like Link to the Past took that formula and refined it. They, like, cut yeah. away the crud. Now, since we're talking about Super Nintendo, I do have to talk about this one cool thing that happened. Oh, uh, yeah. Right in the middle of the 90s, all of a sudden, we were given two things. We were given Donkey Kong which might be my favorite Game Boy game because it was the game where... Donkey Kong 94? Yeah. Yes! Where, oh, you know, so good. you could do a handstand yes. and topple and thing. But that came out at the same time as the Super Game Boy, yep. which was a Super Nintendo cartridge... With a Game Boy slot. With a Game Boy slot. And all of a sudden, you could play Game Boy, not in green, <laughs> but in color. Not the right colors. <laughs> yeah. colors. Four random colors you <laughs> could pick. That's right. You could pick any four colors. It could be blue. It could be red. And it got really complicated, though, because games like Donkey Kong 94 actually had, uh, you, it was built in to support the Super Game Boy, so it could do more than four colors at yeah. time for that game only mm -hmm. but in specific places. And I believe that's the only game that had that. There were a couple, actually. Link's Awakening had it. Link's Awakening DX. Um, yeah. DX. Yeah. We, DX had it, and I believe, did Wario Land? War, one of the Wario Lands, Wario Land 4, or 3 or 4, definitely had it. It was 2. Oh, it was 2. You're right, Wario two, Land 2. Yeah. And it got really confusing because shortly after that, uh, they released the Game, Game Boy, Boy Color, Color, which was kind of a stopgap system between the Advance and the Game Boy. Mm -hmm. The uh, Game Boy Color was my personal favorite Game Boy. It's the one I had the longest. It's the one that I owned the longest. Mm -hmm. That's Before the one was stolen that was, from me. That's the one that was stolen, that's when from, was stolen me. from me. Yeah, when I just caught um, Mew. 
Oh, Pokemon you? Blue. Oh. And then I went to the arcade to hang out with this guy and the rest of our childhood friends. And someone rifled through my bag, took the Game Boy Color, uh, and threw my bag in the trash. I remember oh that day. Oh, my God. That was and awful. I spent like an hour frantically looking all over for it. and We, we it, felt it, it was terrible gone. that day. Man, I yeah, I lost a purple one, too. Much later. I think I was done playing with it by the time it was stolen, but it still yeah. hurt. It was still like, how is it gone? Yeah, I, I how lost, is I lost my Mew. My original Mew. That's so crazy. And I lost Wario Land 2, which oh. was my one of my favorite platformers of all time. Yeah. And on the Game Boy Color, it was in full color. Oh. The, the background of the stages were black, and then the rest of the colors popped in contrast to that black background, and it was lovely. Yeah, what was cool about the, the newer systems, like the color, was that it made the screen so much better. Yeah. Like, even the black and white games looked so much better. They were nice and the super original. crisp. It's true. You know, there was the refresh rate was a lot better, so you didn't have to worry about the ghosting as much. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was a revelation. Do you know what the upgrades were between the two systems? I think it, I think it was an LCD screen. Well, yeah, they they I upgraded think... the LCD to have colors. I yeah. think it could show sixteen at any given time, uh, but also so, the processor was a little bit faster. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was about it. Uh, it was thinner. It was, it was a remember remember the Game, Game Boy Pocket. Well, yeah. well, yeah, the Game Boy Pocket Boy was Pocket actually... Was yeah, this. The color was a little thicker than the Pocket. Pocket yeah. they the were color very was sim- thicker than the Pocket, but the Pocket did not do color. Correct. Yeah, the, pocket, the, the Pocket ran on triple A's. The color yeah, ran on double A's. The Pocket was on triple A. The Pocket was silver, I think, had a silver finish. Yeah, mm-hmm. there and were then, a couple of them. Yeah. But, then, uh, the there silver were different the colors of that. Okay. When the Pocket came out, I remember commercial where you'd get a yellow one. Yeah, my Pocket was purple because it was the... I mean, my color was purple because it was Game Boy Color... The purple one's the best one. <laughs> they, they they came out then. They, that was their um their advertising campaign was play it loud. Yeah, and they, the That's play it loud right, colors. Yeah. They were like here. They had the original Game Boy in like eight colors. Yeah, and then the Game Boy Pocket in all those colors. Uh, the Game Boy Cup Pocket actually had a better screen than the original too. Yes, yeah. still hard to go back to though. I I have one at home, and I was like, oh my god, oh, I nice. thought this was the good one. It's not great. <laughs> oh no, it's not great. So I gotta uh, I gotta talk about one of the weirder things that happened on the Game Boy. And that was Game Boy Camera. Oh, Do you guys yeah. remember this thing? I Smile! Mean, you're on Game <laughs> yeah. Boy Camera. Did it have some kind of like heat transfer printer or something to print out the picture? Yes, took? I had yeah. the printer. Why? <laughs> Why did I have a printer? I never owned any of that. I think I, I one of my cousins had it, and we played with it yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a friend of mine had it. And it's just like, this is, it's like, oh, that's kind of fun to play with, and then not for long. Because again, four colors, very low resolution. No colors. Oh, right, Did right. Did it have colors? Was it, I think it was still shades of gray. I think it was just gray. Yeah, it was very monochrome because the printouts were black and white. It was just black like black, like dot matrix, but like heat transfer like on a receipt. I do remember that there was like one game in Game Boy Camera, and it was like a, uh, it wasn't Space Invaders, it wasn't Raiden, it was like a Galaga, maybe? I don't know. Some when kind you of get shooter to, game. But when you get to the end, it's the one where you get to it and you just see something start coming down from the top. Mm. Like in slow motion, and it's your face yeah. that you put at the end. I distinctly remember that. But what a weird thing to happen! It was was there a Pokemon Snap that was released for that? Yeah. Was that no, that was, that was, was N64. N64. Okay, so what was the and there was Pokemon a camera for that game for the camera? There, there was something Pokemon related for the Game Boy camera. I remember. I don't remember that one. You don't Kids, remember let that. us know what it is. <laughs> Because I'm going to forget, because that's <laughs> real obscure. I could have sworn my friend printed out like a picture of Pikachu or something like that. Hmm. It might have been, it it might have been just in the camera. camera. It made it back into the actual OS. I do remember there were a bunch of Pokemons that came out for that. There was the original, blue and red, and then later a yellow came out that was more like the show. Yep, yeah, so you can get Pikachu as... You can get everybody. At the beginning, yeah. Remember you can get uh, Pikachu, Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander in one cartridge. Oh, I didn't know you could get all of them in one. Yeah, wow. because it kind of followed how the show worked. And that one had Game Boy Color like advancements in it, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, the, the drawings of everybody was a little different. I will say, that little Game Freak opening was pretty impressive. <laughs> like, the, <laughs> yeah, that thing. <laughs> yeah, that thing. <laughs> and then just, like, like jumps in. Ah! Yeah, it jumps out at you. Did you guys ever play any of the Mega Mans? I didn't, actually. A little, and I hated them. I was going to ask, <laughs> why? So the screen was so much smaller, and I believe Mega Man was a pretty hefty size, too, so you yeah. couldn't fit that much action on the screen, and it just felt it felt wrong. Yeah, I remember playing, like, and they were different. Like, the Mega Man 5 on the Game Boy was not Mega Man 5 on the same the line NES, on yeah. the NES, and I thought it was, but no, instead I was fighting space aliens and things, but you had a cat. Suddenly you had a cat named Tango. I could turn into a buzzsaw and do jack shit. <laughs> I didn't remember that at all. Like, I didn't know that they introduced new characters. I thought they were remixes of the NES games. Like, 
they had this is half of the enemies from four and half the enemies from five, and we'll call that Mega Man four or whatever. Well, like I know the original one definitely had fewer bosses because the this one has six bosses. No, like, I think they, they had, like, it was four. like four, and then you fought four more. I think, okay, maybe that's what it was. was. Yeah, but the original Mega Man had six bosses, but. Yeah. On the Game Boy, I think they always did four and then four. That you oh. you could not do eight to choose from. You had to fight the first four first for some reason. And they made something called like Mega Man Extreme or something like that, which was kind of like a Mega Man X port. Yes, but oh, not yeah. there. I mean, the Game Boy it was limited. Like it really yeah. was. What was cool about it? Uh, they ported a lot of Super Nintendo games to the Game Boy that you know were never on the NES. I remember there was a time they were publishing games for the NES, the Game Boy, and the Super Nintendo. And yeah. Nintendo Power would say, you know, rate them all like accordingly, and. Th- th- all the Super Nintendo games went to the Game Boy. Like, they had Killer Instinct on the Game Boy. They had, I, I right, definitely I had, had that. that. Yeah. They had Donkey Kong Land, which was Donkey Kong Country, uh, kind of the same idea on the Game Boy. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember with the, with the, the, the faux 3D, like... Yeah, they're like, we're taking this, this rendering right. technique and yeah. put it on the Game Boy. And we're like, how? Why? Oh my god, it looks horrible. <laughs> it's really hard to play. The games are fine, but it's really hard to get over that I can't tell what's going on kind of visible thing. Yeah, the interesting thing back then that they kind of got around to a little later on Nintendo did was they were pretty much just developing the exact same kinds of games on Super Nintendo for Game Boy like there wasn't like let's design it specifically for handheld yet which came later uh, around the advance there was some for like advance I think that were they started to get that idea but um, there was one game where they did figure that out that they should make it just like specifically for a handheld and that was a Kirby game and I don't remember the name of it but the game pack itself, the cartridge, had like uh, motion control in it, so it knew, and it was like Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Tilt and Tumble. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like they were trying stuff back then, and you could see what the future of this company was going to be—that they were going to be the weirdos that were going to keep trying. It. <laughs> so there was a Pokemon Rumble. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. They had weird stuff. They had that Pokemon Pinball was a game, and that yeah. might have had Rumble in it too. There was, Maybe a, that was it. some of there the cartridges had Rumbles. So. Yeah, some of the, Kirby the pinball well, ones. Too. Yeah, oh yeah, there's uh, Kirby's Pinball Land. Was that what it was called? There were a lot of Kirby. I mean, Kirby was introduced in the game. Oh my god! Yeah, that, that's that was probably, the first game. That was the flagship character, I think. Yeah, really. Well, Kirby, Kirby, Kirby two and Kirby three. No, Kirby and Kirby two. Yeah, they were okay. on the Game Boy. Um, and I mean, we Wario was introduced there. Uh, there, there were Pokemon was introduced there. I mean, a lot yeah. of the flagships, the big ones. Started on the Game Boy. Wow. So, let's talk about the Mario Land series. Specifically, Mario Land 3, Wario Land. Yes. <laughs> that was one of the coolest concepts, and I don't <laughs> remember in another game during that time doing that, putting you in control of the bad guy from the game before. Yeah. And it introduced new mechanics and stuff. It took everything you loved about the original and just kind of twisted it a little bit. Like, the bunny ears were like... Rocket powered, weren't they? Yeah, they had the the rocket like duck helmet, so you could fly horizontally. Yeah, yeah. The bunny ears were for jumping. I forget. Bunny ears were in Mario Land. Because that was two. Yeah. Yeah. What did it do in Mario Land two? I thought it was a in Mario Land two. It was slow. It was yeah. Fall. It was kind of like <laughs> the raccoon <laughs> tail without the flying part. Rabbits don't fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not the <laughs> <new> raccoons. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. That game. Um, it. it it was all about dashing sideways and you attack your enemies from the yeah. side, which is something Mario never does. Shoulder charge. Yeah, the shoulder charge. And it was being a, a brute, a bully, like forcing your way through these levels, like destroying the levels as you went along. And it was really fun. And that it's not a mechanic that I can remember on any other game. I don't remember a Super Nintendo game with that mechanic. Was Wario featured in any Super Nintendo games even? I don't think he was. I mean, there was like a puzzle game or two that he was in, but I don't think there, there wasn't like a full-blown Wario game. Well, I mean, but even when we, he, okay, I guess he did have a puzzle game because I was thinking in N sixty four he was heavily featured in Mario Kart sixty four. That's right, he was. I didn't Mario know Kart. if he was in, if he had a version of Wario's Woods on SNES or anything like that. Yeah, I, I feel like remember. there was all the way at the end of the cycle, like, like the, it was dead already, and they made this game. <laughs> like that, that's kind of what it felt like. But no, I remember uh, the Wii game, the whatever Wario World. Wario where? Well, no, Wario you might World. be. There's a oh Wario World was on the GameCube actually. Okay. Oh, on the GameCube. That Jeez. was the GameCube game. Uh, it was a game. full 3D Wario game. Yeah, where you went Why around. Why did I not know about this game? I got, I got my GameCube. Yeah, I, I only it's saw it recently. It was in uh, Games Done Quick. Okay. Someone was speed running it. Yeah, it's not. It's not 3D. It's still a side scroller, but it has like 3D elements. Well, yeah, to you it. See, uh, it is 3D. Like you come forward. You go forward and back. Yeah, and it's polygonal fully. 
Um, I'm thinking of the Wii version. Which the is Wii uh, Shake It. Was, Wario, oh, Wario Shake Land it. Yes. Shake It. I that's think. what I remember. Yeah, which is a beautiful game. It like, really is. That, it's all like hand-drawn, animated. Um, and that's when I still, I gotta go back and finish that. I played it and I was like, <laughs> this is great. And then it was a time in my life when I didn't have time to play video games. And now I really want to finish that one. And at, at a worse worse time, time, you time really want to Yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, Game Boy, I mean, it was a, it was a really cool period of, uh, it was a cool, really cool piece of technology for the time period that it was in, um, and it just lasted so long. What do you think was the lasting appeal there? Why, where were the imitators? Well, well, there were. Yeah, you had the Sega Game Gear, which was basically a brick most of the time, because the batteries lasted literally 15 minutes, mm-hmm. but it was full, a full-color screen. Very bad refresh rate, so you still had the ghosting issue, especially playing like six Sonic. double A batteries. But you used six double A batteries, would die in like fifteen minutes. <laughs> but it, it had a TV tuner, which didn't help the battery life at all. But it was it was wonderful. And then the Game Boy still chugging along. Then you have the Sega Nomad, which played full Sega Genesis cartridges. What in yeah. a handheld, fully so color handheld, only in Toys R Us. Yeah, only sort of Toys R Us, but it was advertised heavily in lots of places. Had the six buttons and everything. Yeah, Tell I, me more about this. So it, it was a handheld system bigger than the Game Gear, so it was chunky, <laughs> and you put a Genesis cartridge in it full from your Genesis, Genesis cartridge. Cartridge. Oh and it God. plays in full color, has six buttons on it. The Game Boy was still chugging along while that was out, and you know some of the other like spinoffs like the Game Boy Pocket or Color, but the Game Boy was still alive because I think the Nomad came out in like '96. Yeah, and there were, there are other things that came out at the time. There's the Atari Lynx that nobody remembers. Atari made a handheld system that nobody bought. There's the TurboGrafx-16. The TurboGrafx Express was really yeah. cool, actually. It was a lot like the Nomad for the TurboGrafx. Yeah. What? Yeah. There was a TurboGrafx handheld? It was called yep. the Turbo Express, and that it played... Game, that system doesn't, is like, it doesn't really <laughs> exist in my mind. It didn't yeah. actually happen. The Turbo Express is shaped like, and I think was, a portable television. Well, it was a lot. I mean, so the big factor was, was like a Game Boy. The screen was well, well, Yeah, but the screen was small because I had lots of electronics inside. I yeah. cannot wait to watch the graphics on this of all this stuff. That oh, I have yeah. no idea what it is. <laughs> and so that act definitely had a TV tuner built into it. Because wow. we would play Keith Courage and then switch from Keith Courage to watching the Eagles game. What is Keith Courage? <laughs> Keith Courage it was, it was a game like, that came with the, the, the Turbo, Turbo graphics. graphics. And it was like a side scrolling action RPG, I think. It was I kind was of like Castlevania ish. It was yeah. like their Castlevania. It had clothes. awesome music. Yeah, <laughs> music I have great. so much googling to do. Oh uh, yeah, that, that's you. You can play a lot of that stuff on the Wii Virtual Console, and a lot of them are worth it. Like Keith yeah. Courage is fun to play through. Bonk One is really fun. Oh, I did love yeah, Bonk. Bonk. Was awesome. Yeah, big fan of Bonk. He was the mascot for that system back when systems had mascots. Oh, I, well, if we want to go into the, there's like the, the Neo Geo Pocket. Oh, yeah, Neo Geo Pocket. The Wonder Swan? Wonder Swan, yes. Uh, What's a oh, Wonder Swan? Wonder Swan was this weird, uh, it wasn't backlit, but I think it was color. Yeah. Handheld system that they made a couple games for. <laughs> yeah, it was like Neo Geo Games? No, SNK Games. SNK, it. yeah. I don't remember who, it might have been SNK, SNK who was the manufacturer, but yeah. it played a lot of. Um, Neo Geo SNK games. But it was all like really like, niche and like we, like you're saying, you never heard of a lot of these. No. We were all alive at that time and it's just uh, yeah, these, because the Game Boy was had such a, a large shadow over everything else despite being technically inferior on pretty much every level except battery life. Yeah. The Game Boy lasted a pretty good time for yeah. four double batteries. Four Why double do batteries. you guys think that was? Oh, Why was, do you think it beat out everything else? It had the game library, as we talked about. It had many classics, many series were born there and thrived there. It had Pokemon, which put thrust into the homes of kids everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it kept it in people's minds. So part of it was probably because parents were like, you have a Game Boy that works. Why do you need a Wonder Swan? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, true. I can continue to play Pokemon with my friends, with the link cable. Why give this up? The system was made, built like a tank. Yeah, I remember, like, in its last couple years, like, the Game Boy is pretty cheap. Like, yeah. you get a new Game Boy for seventy nine ninety nine, I think, mm-hmm. like, during the last days. And that was, I mean, it's still a lot of money. Back then, money was worth more. Uh, but seventy nine ninety nine was still, like, I can get that for my kid. You know, that'll shut them up. Uh, <laughs> they can play this in the car. And it is a parent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, the more I think about it, while Game Boys were sort of thing, the, the original in the pocket and the color, did the Engage come out? 
as a contemporary or was that no afterwards? that was that was like game boy because we were or... still in school so it was before 2000s but i don't know when the game boys when the game boy end of life no i think the end gauge was right after we were out of high school you sure yeah i think oh, it's okay. in the odds what is the end gauge the end gauge so, <laughs> nokia what is happening so <laughs> nokia made a handheld game system which was also a slash s- phone it was his phone so ah. there's some a phenomenon called side talking <laughs> Because, you know, imagine, like, the, the, um, the four factor of, like, a Game Gear. It's you know, horizontal. The buttons uh, are either side. Screen's pre- in the middle. Pretend my phone is, is one. Yeah. So, the speaker was here, and the microphone was here on the top's edge of the Engage. So, so if you, had, you were playing a game and you got a fall call, you would hold it to your head sideways like this and go, Hello, I am hearing you crystal clear on my Nokia Engage. And everyone made fun of that with a meme called Side Talking. And there's this whole website, I yeah. think it's just sidetalking.com, <laughs> where people hold various things sideways to their heads looking stupid. <laughs> the 90s were weird, kids. <laughs> yeah. It really was. And the, but the Game Boy was a big deal back then. And, uh, you know, it definitely set the tone for what a handheld should be and would later become. I mean, did anything outsell the Game Boy? Uh... I mean, the it, Game Boy, it depends how you count the iterations. I would but say I think, units, like units sold. Like if you're counting the original Game Boy and all of its iterations, I don't. I think it's still number one. I think like, it might beat out the, the Wii. PS2. Hasn't beat, oh, okay, so the Wii and the PS2 haven't beaten it in overall. No, I don't stuff. think oh. so. Uh, I have to look these stats out, but they're, they're it's up. It's either up there or way surpassed. I like, mean, with the magic of the internet, they're up here right now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but no, it was a monster, like, and just kept being a monster. And I think it probably confused the other companies, like, yeah. why? It was like, we put out this cool thing, it's got like 256 colors, it's got TV tuner, and it, you can see it in the dark, like, you don't need, like, the, the original Game Boy had no backlight, so that was the other thing, like... <laughs> oh my god, I forgot We didn't even about get that. to that, the screen was bad, it was no color, it had poor refresh rate, and it was dim. Yeah, really my, dim. my favorite accessory was a magnifying glass <laughs> yeah. that has you front with the light. So you, <laughs> you telescope the magnifying glass like like uh, panel out and it had a light built into it to backlight the screen and it magnifies the screen. So there's a way you can play some games. This That's giant, right. I'm just thing. About that. It was, it was like this far from <laughs> yeah. the screen. It was like, imagine like, do, 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 like it was huge and at that point. And it wasn't like quality optics. It was like bent <laughs> around the yeah. edges. Yeah. It was fish-eyed like crazy. Yeah, and if you horror. thought you looked like a dork before, imagine <laughs> like putting a headgear on to the, uh, onto the Game Boy. That's what it was like. Yeah, so, so it was one of those things where you couldn't play it like in your bed. That was not just not a thing. I you mean, had to like put a lamp I mean, directly. I on. could yeah. because I had a nice flashlight system going. <laughs> well, I did too. Like I remember being really excited that uh, I got this like third-party slide-on light, and mm-hmm. it was took four additional AA batteries, <laughs> yes. mind you, that slid onto the Game Boy. So it has four AA batteries. The top <laughs> thing has four AA batteries, and you flipped it on, but then you had light, and I was like, I can play this when I'm going to bed. I can play Wario Land in bed. This is amazing. And there was a port. Remember the port on the side? That light started to be able to go into and draw energy from? Oh, yeah, the the extension port, which was yeah. the same port that the Game Link used. That's right. So, well, all right, so let's think about what this system did. This system introduced uh, Link Play altogether. Like, that, you couldn't do that. I you mean, there had to be, you had to be on one system before that thing came out. Arguably, it, it was the first portable gaming system with, uh, with games that you could swap out. That's, I don't think anything oh, did that's that before. Right. Yeah, the like Mattel football was just Mattel football, the handheld. That was yeah, there were a lot of. Uh, and they had yeah, the Tiger we were games, off of those which were Tiger just single, games. Yeah, single game devices. The, the Nintendo Game and Watch. Game series. and Watch were also single game devices. They're yeah. all single game devices. I think Game Boy was the first one with swappable cartridges ever. Uh, it was a big deal. It was yeah. a big deal because you could lose those cartridges. <laughs> yeah. You had to take care of those cartridges, but. Same trusty blowing technique as the NES and the Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, and you rusted out. Which, yeah. which you know now was faulty, but at the time was the only way to play. Yeah. That's right. But yeah, I mean, it just introduced a lot of uh, mechanics and things that we kind of take for granted. And, you know, fast forward. Uh, do you guys remember when the Advance came out? The Advance came out in like 2000, I think. Leaps and bounds. But you know what? It didn't have the same... Allure didn't have the same magic for me. And I don't know why, because, like, (laughs) Mario 2 was on that thing. To me, it was the form factor, because it was horizontal, and it was not my beloved vertical um, orientation Game Boy. You know, I find we all feel the same way, I think. Because the events came out, and I got it, and I liked a lot of games on it, but I don't feel a love. Like, I don't go back like, oh, I miss Game Boy Advance games. I don't. I miss Game Boy games, though. 
I don't think I can name two Game Boy Advance games. Oh, that that can't be true. Super Mario I, Advance I, I, and I Super Mario of... Advance Two. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I, besides the ones with Advance in the title, like I think the earlier Castlevania games. Oh, they were really good too. There was a Metroid that was pretty badass on that. Metroid too. Fusion. Yes, Fusion. Okay. Was really good. And you think about games like Advance Wars started there. It did start there. Okay. And Fire Emblem was on there. Oh well, my god. But here's the thing: it doesn't feel that Mario and Luigi was on there. But it doesn't. It doesn't feel the same. And that might be. That might just be us harkening back to a simple time. Or it could be. That there was a reason that that thing lasted for think, 10 to 12 I years. I think there's it a magic, felt, yeah. Right. Magic's my big thing. Like, that is why <laughs> I'm a Nintendo fan, because there's magic in their games. You know, I actually got that magic back. I don't think it's all nostalgia, because the DS, I look back, and I'm like, I love the DS. Yeah, the, the DS, DS, I loved when I first love got my, the my first DS fan. I played it all the time. Yeah. That was so Loved cool. Loved it with me. It was great. But, like, yeah, I, did, the I had the big one, too. The big gray one, yep. before they got yeah, small. I, I, I had the big red one. Came with Mario Kart... DS. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which was an awesome game. I really think I still had the strap in my, in the stuff I took from my old job. Was it was in my desk oh for like 12 God. years. The strap, they had like little like Mario decal. That, with, that was the first checkers. Nintendo system that went online. Yeah. Um, inherently. That was the first one that had it built in. So you could play Mario Kart online. I remember that blowing my mind. And, and the it, fact that you could play multiplayer without that link. Like Game Boy Advance, you still had to have the link cable. It was garbage. Yeah, the download link. Download oh play. Oh my god. It was awesome. Now we're just going to the DS. The DS was great. <laughs> and like then the after that, game. the 3DS. Yeah, which I, which I really enjoyed. I Play still play. Maj- playing Majora's Mask on the 3DS is, is a, a, an opera in a time. is a deep pleasure of mine. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Nice. And now, we're at this weird point. I, do you think the oh god, 3DS right. is ending? And you're right. In a this Switch is actually world? a really topical thing for this genre, this era. Because... Is Nintendo ever going to make another dedicated handheld system? I think they probably won't. Why would you? Right. Uh, it doesn't Wait. make a lot of sense from a business standpoint. Yeah, because the Switch is the best of both worlds, literally. Yeah, I mean, the Switch is awesome. The, the But it does, you make different games. Like we were saying, like the DS had a lot of games you would never find on a console. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3DS the same, but now it has to work on both with the Switch. So we're at this, maybe we're at the end of that Game Boy line, which I feel like what the, the DS was a spiritual successor to. Yeah. Um, and now, like, I don't think that's going to be a thing anymore. It's a little sad. It is. But you can always pick up that giant brick anytime you want and stare into that green screen. It's true. Play some of those old games that, you know, brought us so much love back in the day. Uh, let us know some of your Game Boy memories, because I feel like there's a special place in everyone's heart for that specific machine. Uh, you know, maybe you borrowed your brothers, maybe it was your sisters, maybe you had to share one. God! Yeah, yeah. Did I, anyone have me. to share? That I had to me. share until it was like, alright, screw it, you're both getting your own. <laughs> Can't handle this anymore because I was like an addict. I gotta, just gotta get my Game Boy fix real quick, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But let us, know, uh, let us know your Game Boy memories. We're curious, you know, not just games, but experiences as well. That's the point of this show. <laughs> is uh, building a community around the things that we love, like gaming, and uh, talking about the past. Can't get to the future without the past. You know, there's a lot of stuff that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for that giant gray brick. Thank you very much for watching Tubby Talk this week. I am Terry of Terry Leahy Films. With me, as always, are my buddies. Chris McGuire. Steve Wright Jr. of Tubby Robot. That's right. Please come down to Tubby Robot, enjoy some ice cream, talk some video games. Oh, would you ever be able to get a Game Boy game up there? Absolutely. That's something we could do. Why don't you explain what's over there? So we have uh, (laughs) Wall of Vision, where we play classic arcade games, uh, but we... Basically, can play anything. We have a PC running, whatever you want. Um, but we, we, we pick a, a new game every week. But you know, just for funsies, we could do Game Boy games for ourselves anytime we wanted. That sounds like something we could do in the winter, possibly. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Oh, you guys should make an ice cream that looks like the original Game Boy. <laughs> Little lime in there. Oh, like you could do, popsicle you could do um, an ice cream sandwich. Actually, that would, might be work pretty well. Guys, come to Tubby Robot. They're going to start having Game Boy ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> you can have them anytime. But come on down and talk video games with us. We're so glad that you're watching the show. And uh, we're going to keep making it whether you like it or not. So join the conversation and let us know what you, uh, what you think. We're so happy that you join us again. We'll see you soon. Game on. <laughs>